Hey, what's up everyone? Ultimate Atomic HD here and welcome to another episode of School of OTK. Last time we finished up with the monster cards and now we're going to move on to the other two thirds of all cards in the game. Those being spells and trap cards. Spell cards, which is the type of card we'll be talking about first, is represented by this green card frame as you can see here. And unlike uh, normal summoning a monster, for example, you can play as many spell cards as you want per turn, uh, provided that you meet the activation conditions. And you simply activate a spell by placing it in your spell and trap zone and resolving its effect. After the effect has been resolved, you send it to the graveyard, unless we're talking about some of the other more specific spell cards and spell types. Uh, which we'll get into right now. So, the spell cards are divided into six, uh, six subtypes. And the first one we have here are normal uh, spell cards, or should I say spell cards without a subtype. So, normal spell cards, as you can see here, are plain and, and have no uh, symbol to represent what other uh, what subtype the spell card belongs to. Uh, normal spell cards can be activated normally by placing them in the spell and trap zone, resolving their effect and then they go to the graveyard, or you can set them in order to uh, mitigate the ruling of you having more than six cards, because in Yu-Gi-Oh there is a rule which states that you cannot hold more than six cards in your hand when you enter your end phase. If you enter your end phase when you have more than six cards, you have to keep discarding cards to the graveyard in order to... Uh, until you have six cards in your hand. This is circumvented by having a continuous spell, something we'll get to in a bit, uh, called infinite cards, which basically removes the hand size limit, meaning you can hold as many cards as you want. But as soon as it gets destroyed, you'll have to discard all the excess cards during your next end phase. Now, uh, when you set a spell card, you can still activate it by flipping it face up again during the same turn. However, this does not hold true for one other specific spell, uh, spell type, which we'll get to in a minute. So, yes, you, the spells are the most flexible when it comes to these kind of activation conditions. Next up we have our first subtype of uh, spell cards other than normals and those are ritual spells. Rituals are identified by this little flame icon next to the spell card text and like I said in in the previous two videos, ritual cards and ritual spell cards are only used to summon a ritual monster and for nothing more. So I won't spend much time on them here. Our next subtype is the continuous spell card, which is identified by having this little infinity icon next to the spell card logo. And unlike normal and ritual spells, which function exactly like uh, exactly the same. Continuous do not go to the graveyard when you activate them as their effects go uh, are active as long as the card remains face up on the field uh, until you either send it to the graveyard by your own card effect to activate as a, some, some sort of a cost or when your opponent destroys it or sends it to the graveyard by something. So, and also you can set them and then activate them again immediately during the same turn, should you feel the need to do so. Our next uh, subtype of spell cards is the quick play spell. Quick play spells are identified by that having this little thunder uh, logo and marker next to the spell card text. And spell, uh, the quick play spells, when you set them, uh, you cannot activate them again during the same turn. Why? Because quick play spells have a higher uh, spell speed than all the other spell cards we, we will talk about. 
and quick play spells can be activated outside of the main phases meaning because of this higher spell speed that they are sporting and what exactly the, the higher spell speed means is something I will get uh, get to in the next video but shortened to the point it simply allows you to respond to other effects with uh, the quick play spell and the quick play spells are the only types of spells which can uh, which you can use to respond to other uh, quick play uh, uh, to other uh, effects activated during your opponent's turn or maybe during your turn when your opponent activates a quick effect of his own so for example uh, the uh, it is your draw phase and then you draw a quick play spell you can immediately activate it if you meet the activation requirement so that is it for the quick play spells and our next uh, subtype of spell cards are field spell cards. Field spell cards are, are, are identified by having this little star icon uh, next to the spell card text and field spells unlike all the other spell types in the game go into the special field zone which I talked about in the first episode so and just like the all the other spell types you can set them and then activate them during the same turn that you set them so uh, and also field spells also have some of their own mini search support engines which you can use to access them a little bit quicker while all the other spell cards are a bit more difficult to search because spell cards are the best kind of uh, se se secondary support cards that that are used to monster uh, that are used on monsters while trap cards are a bit too costly due to their limitations and the last and the last subtype of spell cards we have is the equip spell cards equip spell cards can sometimes be uh, be mistaken for field spells because their logos look kind of similar. The equip spell has more of a plus sign than a star like a field spell does. But what equip spells do, they stay on the field after activation just like the continuous spell. However, they must, as the name implies, be equipped on a monster, be it specific or any monster of your choice. And basically the effects of equipped spells only apply to said equipped monster and nothing else. And of course, if the equipped monster leaves the field, the spell card goes along with it. So this is something else you have to watch out for. And out of all of the uh, sp spell types that see competitive play, E equip spells see the least amount of com uh, competitive play because of how underwhelming they are compared to all the other spell types and they usually only see play if they have very very powerful effects and the ones that see most amount of competitive play are the equip spells that m bring monsters back from the graveyard which again are a bit rare and that is pretty much it when it comes to spell cards and this is going to be very very short since the trap cards are mostly the same with one major difference. Trap cards are identified by having this uh, pinkish purplish flame. It's actually more pink than... Uh, uh, than purple because fusion monsters are pure purple card frame and Remember how I said that you can set a spell card and then activate it during the same turn? Uh, you actually must do this for trap cards. You must set it and then wait until at least your opponent's uh, other turn starts. Uh, so one turn after you uh, set the trap card and only then can you activate it. Uh, if you meet the activation condition and of course you cannot activate trap cards directly from your hand unless there is a specific card effect that allows you to do so. So trap cards are basically slower version of uh, spell cards. There's even a continuous trap in the game called uh, anti-spell fragrance which basically turns every spell in uh, which basically makes all spells function like trap cards. So, meaning that you have to set them and, t and then and wait until uh, either your opponent's next turn if you're setting a quick play spell or your next turn if you're setting any other spell card. So, uh, yeah, basically the trap cards are basically slower and costlier versions of uh, spell cards. Now, trap cards only have three subtypes, unlike spell cards, which have six uh, subtypes in total. 
uh, normal trap cards which are basically identified the same way as normal spells and function the exact the same way aside from the limitation I just mentioned. Continuous trap again function exactly the same way as continuous spells but with, uh, with, with putting the limitation aside. And last is a, is a card type unique to trap cards, which are counter trap cards, which are identified by having this little reverse arrow logo on next to the trap card, effect, uh, trap card text. Now, counter trap cards are rock the highest, well, official highest uh, spell speed in the game. And what that, what that actually means is something I will get into when I uh, get to the next episode. And I really won't waste much of your time here. So yeah, this video has been very, very short because, well, spells and traps are very, very similar in how they function. And with one key difference, it's mostly... I'll be repeating stuff I already mentioned for spell cards, so I wanted to keep things simple and basically discuss the spell speeds in the next video where I can fully devote myself to, uh, to explaining it in as much detail as possible in order to avoid uh, too much info dumping here in this video and keeping that video concise with what I actually want to talk about in that video. So anyway, hope you all guys enjoyed this little uh, tutorial on spells and traps and next time we meet we will actually be going on to some proper game mechanics now that I've properly introduced you to the basics of the game and all the card types in the game. Next time we meet we will be talking about resolving chains and what exactly these spell speeds are that I kept mentioning throughout this video. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, videos and updates. Comment, like and subscribe. Be sure to check out my Patreon when you got the time. Maybe drop a few donations if you feel like it. And as usual, I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. So see you all and have a good day. Peace.